Hello friends, this is Brain from GameBrain.media, and it has been a minute since I've streamed Fishing Planet, but it has been 1957 hours that I've played the game. <laughs> and while I've never done things this way before, I figured that I would make a video as I transition most of my gaming to 4K. I have an affordable Vizio 50-inch LED 4K television with HDMI output and 60 hertz refresh. So that's what I'm using. Um, to tell you the truth, Fishing Planet looked pretty damn good at 1920 by 1080 and it's going to look even better, or it does look even better at 4K. I did do a test. Um, that was in uh, the Florida Everglades. And honestly, when I'm in the Florida Everglades, I kind of stick to the same place. So I wanted to try something different. I also wanted to try to uh, put something out there that will reintroduce me and introduce maybe some new fisher people to Fishing Planet. So with that all said, yeah, we were we were at Fishing Planet, and I guess I should give a brief intro. If you're totally brand new, Fishing Planet is a free game. You can download it and play for free. You will progress through the beginner stages where you have to fish on the beginner lake and you have to catch a certain number of fish and you get limited quantity of equipment. Uh, you know, just like every other video game, you start with the bare necessities and move forward by gaining uh, pieces and parts. In this case, instead of swords and shields or guns and uh, tanks or jeeps, helicopters, etc., you know, shooters, racers, um, that kind of thing, you're fishing. So you're gonna get a little wimpy fishing rod and you have to go catch specific fish in a little tiny lake. It's great. It's easy. It's it. It's like the tutorial level. Okay, and then you move forward, um, and you move to a bigger and better lake, and you've won some prize money, or you've won some money by catching fish that the fish and game guys get to tag for their biological research. If you're not a the kind of fisher person who wants to take that meat home, <laughs> anyway, everything you catch you get paid for. So don't buy everything willy-nilly right off the bat if you're just starting Fishing Planet at Lone Star Lake, the tutorial beginner lake. Just finish all of the challenges there and you're going to learn a lot. Then you move on to probably, I would suggest, Emerald Lake um, and you can catch walleye. You can do that with the equipment that you have from Lone Star. You don't have to buy a thing. Go to Emerald Lake a couple times. Well, uh, I guess we should get into that part now, huh? Go to Emerald Lake, right? You're going to start off here in Lone Star Lake, and then you're going to go to Emerald Lake, and you're going to find that you probably could benefit from a better rod, a, a, a rod with a higher um, weight rating, um, maybe 10 pound test instead of six pound. Um, and that you might want to buy a purple spoon, a narrow purple spoon, I think it's called, uh, Old Faithful. Um, and then you can catch a whole bunch of walleye there, and you can make a whole bunch of money. But don't spend that money. Be a tightwad. Hang on to that money. Wait and wait and wait until you absolutely understand what you need to buy. Like, don't buy stringers. Buy a keep net. A keep net is a fantastic piece of equipment to keep your fish in healthy condition rather than a stringer always by the keep net you can't release fish from the stringer but in the future going forward this is going to be very valuable you can release fish from your keep net and maybe you can dump two three pounders in order to fit a 12 pounder into your net and get to keep that and capitalize on the reward money or the the uh, uh, research money or the, the food money or whatever you however you want to look at what what happens and how you make money in this game because it's kind of like blah, whatever anyway that's my two cents on on getting started you're going to start in lone star fish until you bleed um get bored out of your mind um there are tons of great tutorials about lone star lake by a guy named kp shimano that dude is the bomb you can learn everything about the game you need from that one guy on YouTube. Um, 
So, why are you watching me? <laughs> I don't know. Because I'm going to do something different, I think. Um, I'm going to approach the game as if I was a complete noob, and I am, although I'm not, um, I'm going to go to Quanchkin Lake, and you have to be level 26 in order to get here, so you have to have a specific group of equipment in order to get here, and as you can see, I've already purchased my license, which you need to buy. Always buy the advanced license, otherwise you're going to get a fine. Um, there's no way you're going to just screw up, you're going to be thinking, you're going to be all excited that you caught a big fish, and you have the basic license, and you put it in your keep net. <gasps> oh no! I just kept a fish that I'm, it's not legal to keep on a basic fishing license, blah blah blah. Just always buy the advanced. You're going to be able to swing paying for it, don't worry. Like, I have five million dollars in game money, no cheats. I swear to God, no cheats. But in 1900 hours, guess what? Yeah, you can do that. Now I did buy and win a couple of, uh, uh, what are they called? DLC packages um, from a Twitch gamer called Warlord Sully. I recommend that you watch him on Twitch. He's a good guy. He gives away um, DLC for this game. He has a relationship with the developer. But uh, anyway, I want to go to the globe. Okay, so Quanchkin Lake, I've actually just bought my license. But before I go there, and before I even bought the license, because the license is on a timer. I bought it at 12.09. February 9th, 2023. So this is on a timer. And the, the, the license purchase is on a timer. But what I did before coming here is I, I busted out a little 3x5 notepad that I have. And I wrote down Fishing Planet, Bluegill, Red Ear, Crappie. Like, I wanted to do a Sunfish um, bombing run, but only for uniques. This one lake has all four uniques that I wanted. That is the bluegill, the red ear, the white crappie, and the black crappie. And they're a little challenging. Um, the crappies are. Um, actually, they're all a little challenging, but uh, stupidly fun. I love sunfish or uh, panfish. P pan fishing. And then, of course, if you come here, you might get bored or you not, might not make your money. You might not make enough money to flip over to a new day. Therefore, I have also written down the items needed for picking up some chain pickerel. They are uniques. Um, some flatheads that are unique. Ga uh, alligator gar are unique. Channel cats are, are unique here. So our, um, well, let's just go ahead and look at the source I used, which is the Fishing Planet Wiki. I'm going to go ahead and bounce into a new tab here. This is the main page. You can pick any lake you want, but because I knew that I wanted a specific species, I went and looked for... Hmm, well, it doesn't actually give you a selection of... Pick a fish, any fish. There are so many fish in the game. Um, let's see. Ah, here you go. Species. All right, there it is. So if you pick the species, I wanted to catch a bluegill, right? Oh, so and that's a bream. Um, now, if... Whoop, I'm sorry. It's not a bream. Um, what do they call them? Show crap. Panfish family. Okay, well. There you go. Bluegill and red ear are two of the species that I wanted. So I'm going to write... I'm going to hold my control tab and uh, left-click the mouse. And then, hmm, let's see, where are the crappies? There you go, crappy family. Well, there's two of them. So, bam, bam. Now, I'm going to close this tab. Take a peek at, uh, oh, here, here's a red ear sunfish. It's going to tell me down here, see this? They can get up to five pounds in the wild, in reality, not in the game. I thought this unique, um, you know, the unique and the weights would be v relevant to the game because this is the Fishing Planet wiki, but no, the world record red ear is five pounds. In the game, I've caught a four pounder, and I think that's about as big as they get, but we're going to look into that, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about that later. Now, here's the same thing for bluegill, 4.6 pounds. I think I have a three, no, I have a four pounder, but I don't have anything with decimals, um, not a 4.6. Um, then we have the black crappie. It says also five pounds. The white crappie, it also says, gets up to five pounds. 
dude, they're full of crap. That's never going to happen. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just sorry to tell you. So, anyway, I knew that uh, there were uniques in Quanchkin, Quanch, yeah, Quanchkin Lake, Louisiana, and that's where I decided I wanted to go. So, I'm going to go ahead and look at the Fishing Planet Wiki and scroll around a little bit. I can see here the layout of the map. I can see the travel fee is $6,800. Whoa, doggies. And every day... Um, like, I had to pay $5,000 for a license, but when I'm there and I renew my license per day, it adds an extra 15 hundo, right? So you can see here, one day of fishing is going to cost you five grand. So you need to make five grand. You need to pay for the travel expense of 6800 So if you go here, you better be planning to make $11,800 in prize money for either meat fish biological research or I don't know whatever the third thing I said if you want to be, you know if you want to find a reason to fish or a reason to get paid in this game anyway I got a one-day license um, I'm gonna have to pay my $6,800 travel fee and then every day that I stay on the lake and I renew my license it's gonna cost me 1500 for each additional day I stay on the lake uh, I think that's how that works right all right so there's then they tell you about the starting points. There's a, a dock called the Upside Down Dock, the Open Swampy Space, Cypress Streams down south, Pelican Hut, and you can read about those at your leisure. There are competitions, there are tournaments here, but what I really wanted to get to is the species on this particular lake. And as you can see, this guy right here, the bluegill, comes in a unique. I want a unique bluegill. I want a unique red ear. I want a unique white crappie. I want a unique black crappie. And then, as long as I'm here, I'll pick up some money by fishing for the alligator gar, the blue catfish, the channel catfish, and the flathead catfish. Because these boys are worth money. These two guys are worth money. Blue cat's worth a pretty good penny, and channel cat's worth a pretty good penny. And they're easy to find and catch if you have the right equipment. So I came loaded for bear. Uh, well, loaded for catfish and gar. And flathead. <laughs> I also came loaded for largemouth bass because they come in uniques here. Not, I don't think this is the biggest lake for largemouths, but it might be. Um, like the game changes on the regular. It's a free-to-play game with purchasable DLC. And as you advance, you can buy a new lake and a new lake and a bigger rod and a bigger boat and... It's just an ever-expanding universe, and it's awesome, and you're going to love it, especially if you have a 4K monitor. <laughs> but if not, I mean, dude, 1080 by 19 or 1920 by 1080 is bomb. Um, I played the game that way for a long, long time, and it's just a beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I can't say anything more than that. Anyway, while I'm catching these largemouth, I'm also going to be picking up some spotted um, bass. I haven't been here in a very long time, but just wanted to give you an idea how to do some research about where you're going to go next. Um, I told you you go from Texas, then, you know, the, the, the pecking order is you go from Texas to Missouri to New York. New York is Emerald Lake. I would say skip Missouri. Go straight from Texas to New York. And then I would go to Colorado. I, I mean, Colorado is just a beautiful, fun place to fish. Um, and then carry on. Do whatever you want. Go wherever, go wherever you want. But be a tightwad. Be a cheapskate. Don't buy any and everything. Like, as soon as you break into an open new level, don't get the next biggest rod. Wait. If you have a six-pound rod, and they say, oh, and now you can get a, uh, uh, you know, an eight-pound rod, wait. Wait until you've unlocked something and jump from a six-pound to a ten-pound rod. That kind of thing. Like, you always want a hopscotch. Or what? No, that's not hopscotch. Oh, uh, leapfrog. Isn't that leapfrog? Where you jump over, like, one person jumps over another, and the other person jumps over... So you want to leapfrog the middle, the, 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 the next thing you unlock, you want to wait and leapfrog over that to the next biggest thing. And never use a, uh, a stringer. Always use a keep net so you can release fish because you're going to want to, that's going to be one of the most valuable tips you walk away from here with. And then you can do your research here. Uh, find a lake you want to go to, um, then you can see which species are here. And what I've done is I've already done my research and I wrote, down notes. Okay, so I'm going to look at my notes. Fishing Planet. Um, no, no, that's not it. Crappie? Is that the first thing I wrote down? Okay. Fishing Planet Crappie. They come up to five pounds in the real world. 
Um, you they, they bite a number eight or a one aught hook. They can be found in Emerald Lake, Rocky Lake, Niran River, or Quanchkin. Emerald is trophy, Rocky Lake has trophy, Niran River has unis, and Quanchkin has unis. Um, I believe... Oh, that's crappy. Uh, yep, yeah, okay. So then, it also tells you... Okay, uh, well, I guess we should be looking at the crappie. Okay, here we go. Gets up to five pounds, right? Um, it has these preferred lures and these preferred baits. So I wrote this all down on a little notepad so I don't have to bounce back into here. And here's the hook sizes. So I wrote it all down in a little format that works for me on a, a 3x5 notepad. Bam, I flipped the page and now I'm on bluegill. So let me bounce out of here and bluegill. All right, so same thing. I can see bluegill come up to 4.6 pounds in the real world as a, as a world record fish, I think. Um, you know what? That would be really fun to look up, wouldn't it? Let's do it. Bluegill. Search the web for bluegill. Um, world record. You know, you'd think somebody could raise one in captivity. That would just be... There it is. Four pounds, 12 ounces. That's 4.6. Yeah, that might be 4.75. Um, here you go. Other state record bluegill and catch. Four pound, five ounce. So, anyway, yep. Yep, yep, yep. You think they could be raised in captivity and just be, be just overfed and they could grow a six pound frickin' bluegill, but apparently not. Um, I, if so, you think Bass Pro Shop would have done that, remember? You ever walk into a Bass Pro or a Cabela and they got the giant uh, North American freshwater aquarium that you walk under a tunnel bridge with aquariums on both sides and there's it's just giant bass. Oh, I love that thing. Anyway, I digress as usual. I did my research on the bluegill, and it comes up to four or five pounds, so I, I outfitted my gear appropriately, my inventory. I picked a rod, a bait rod, and a lure rod as per what this is telling me. I have preferred lures with nano spoons, nano spinners, and soft baits. I also brought dough balls, crickets, red worms, maggots, and I know that they are at Quanchkin, and I also brought eight and two aught hooks for my bait. So I've done my research, right? I went to Quanchkin Lake. I knew that this is where the unique bluegill lives. Lo and behold, the unique red ear lives here too. Unique red ear can get up to five pounds in the wild. Um, in the game, not so much, but here we have preferred baits. Now, they're, you're probably not gonna get a red ear on a lure because they're not even telling you that a red ear will hit a lure in this game. But I brought blood, maggots, waxworms, and bloodworms. Um, I know that it's going to hit a number eight, no, a one aught. So, right, I'm sun fishing or I'm pan fishing. So, bluegill, red ear, white crappie, black crappie, all four are uniques. All four will hit an eight to a one aught. All four basically hit the same um, live bait. Eh. Maybe crickets don't work on one, but they work on the other. So, you know, you get your loadout tuned in for the fish that you're going after. Here we are. I'm going to wrap this up real quick. Here's the, um, you know, the crappie. You look at the weight. You look at the preferred lures. You look at the marshmallows. You look at the hook size down here. Bang, bang. Same stuff. It's just another freaking panfish. Now we get to the largemouth. 22 pounds is a world record. Actually, 22.5, I think. Um, but lots of lures will, you know, the, 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 the bass is one of the greatest game fish in the world because they're aggressive hunters and they will hit the lures like crazy. And all these lures work. You can also fish with um, bait for largemouth, um, small minnows and shiners. But keep in mind that in the Everglades, Florida Everglades, the large minnows, they will also hit them. If we look at the bottom, it says uh, four, uh, a number four hook to a four aught. Okay. I think I've used larger hooks and large minnows with a six aught or maybe even a seven or eight aught hook in Florida Everglades. And I've caught a 13.5 or six um, pound largemouth. Lately, the largest, lar the biggest largemouth I've seen on the leaderboards of Fishing Planet is 12.6. So I do believe that, you know, the 
game continues to release and and change exactly what fish are the world records in the game or the you know the the, the largest available fish you can catch in the game so anyway here's a large mouth here's the spotted bass he only gets up to 10 pounds so i've got the appropriate lures i've got the appropriate baits i even added bringing natural eggs but they're going to hit a smaller hook down to a number one but a number four aught. I don't want to catch small fish, so I'm always going to be using a four aught for both largemouth bass and the spotted bass. Then the gar. Okay, here's alligator gar. Gets up to 265 pounds in the wild. Uh, you're not going to catch that in the game. Um, I think I caught 110 or 113 pounder in the day. Back in the day, we can look at my world records when I or my personal records when we get into the game. But uh, here's their preferred baits, and then here's their. I had to go and pick up an 11 aught hook because I didn't have one. Um, anyway, mostly I'm um, going to be live bait fishing for gar, and it's fun, um, but the largest gar I've seen lately on the leaderboards is 110 pounds, or last time I looked, it may have changed. Okay, you picking up what I'm throwing down? Okay, good. Then we don't need to look at the catfish in depth, we don't need to look at the flatheads in depth we don't look, need to look at the chain pickerel in depth except this guy's an oddball he will hit a lure and there's only one place to find them at this map i will show you that because i wanted one um, while i'm here they're pretty valuable and and it's just fun it's really hard to hit that spot and i may or may not have brought the right gear to do it so it's going to hit a 2 or a 5 hook and I've never caught them here with uh, bait. In New York, you can catch, I think, a chain pick is there. And then uh, grass pickerel maybe is, is what's there. But all right, they're going to hit the lures. And when we get in the map, uh, I will show you that. I have things mapped out, or I have um, bookmarks and saved spots because I've been here before. So now that I've bought my license and I've burned 30 minutes of prime fishing time gonna jump into Quanskin Lake how come it's not working oh gotta hit travel you can't double click this it's like protecting people from being stupid and accidentally um, touching something and, and and launching so yeah you gotta hit the travel button over there we're gonna travel to the ponds where boats are not allowed I'm cool with that Oh my god, I love this lake. I haven't been here in so long, and now I'm running 4K, baby. So let's just do a quick look at settings. And go to video. I am running 3840 by 2160 at 60 hertz. I have the graphics quality set to ultra. That's as high as it goes. I have the anti-aliasing at high. That's as high as it goes. Notice these arrows are all grayed out. Um, I have the dynamic water set to high. That's as high as it goes. I have V-Sync turned off. SSAO. And full screen, post effects applied. I'm all good there. Um, I generally turn any kind of music off because YouTube will give you a freaking copyright strike. And some game companies will uh, say that you owe them royalties off of your videos. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. So there's that. And uh, here we are, looking at the map. Welcome to Quanchkin Lake. Louisiana. Um, I'm going to have to bounce around and click a couple of these different um, icons because I don't remember where my favorite bluegill fishing spot is. And let's see, time of day in the game is 5 a.m. And as soon as I jump into one of these, I think that clock's going to start ticking. So I'm going to stick with, um, I'm, I'm going to show you around a little more. Um, you can check out the weather, and I can see that for the next three days, same shit, different day. Uh, the, bet, the the fishing picks up about 5 p.m. or maybe even 7 or 8 p.m. Uh, but, you know, this might be because they're not fishing, f or they're not listing the, uh, the panfish, which might be more active in these cooler hours of the day. But, anyway... Upside down, okay, that's the dock that is currently highlighted here. 
I believe my bluegill fishing spot is over here at Pelican Hut. Yep, 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 yep. Now that I see the word Pelican Hut, yep. All right, fish species. You can click that, and you can see their alligator gar is here in both common and trophy. Then the uh, black crappie is here, common trophy and unique, baby. So if you click it, you get some details about the fish. Now, I guess you don't have to be... You, 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 you're going to burn some time in the game looking at this and calculating out these things. But it's a great in-game reference. But prior to coming in, I suggest that you look at the Fishing Planet Wiki. You recognize that, oh, for black crappie, I better have um, marshmallows, maggots, waxworms, bloodworms, and small minnows in my tackle box or in my bait box. Because that's the preferred baits if that's the fish I'm going to target. I'm going after bluegill right now. So here we are. So it's a great in-game reference, but I suggested that you look at the wiki prior to coming so that you can build an appropriate loadout. We've already talked about licenses. Um, real quick, I'll talk about rooms. You know, when I'm streaming, I choose a private room. Um, otherwise, I'll, I'll go to a random room. If my friends are online, it would say, uh, you know, join a friend's room or a room that your friend is in. Um, socializing and chatting is one of the most fun aspects of the game you know you, you somebody catches a bomb ass fish and everybody in the room's like woohoo good job yay uh nice fish you know and that's cool or people are like hey where can i find this or that species and people will say well i'm on this dock find me at and i'll show you and then boom somebody magically appears and they tra tra uh, what do they call it? fast travel uh, teleport to a, another dock and they stand next to somebody else and he's like see that uh, you know see that log over there and see that lily pad right in between those cast past it use this lure bam people are super helpful and cool so now let's talk about inventory um, I recommended that you look at the wiki fishing planet wiki to plan out your Neat, uh, plan out what you bring to the party because I'm coming here specifically to pan fish and oh by the way if fishing sucks and I'm not making enough money I brought some heavy load out to go after those gar and catfish and flathead to make bank while the sun don't shine um, but initially I am going to go after the bluegill and the crappie and the red ear so I have a really lightweight rod because it's so much more fun to use an appropriately rigged rod. Now, something else a lot of people ask, hey, I caught a fish. Why does it have red? Why is there a red streak and it's only halfway filled or something like that? That's your experience. If you're using a 20-pound rod and you catch a 3-pound bluegill, you're not going to get much experience because your rod is overpowered. You use the appropriate rod. Use a proper tool for the proper job. Remember that from shop class? Proper tool, proper job. You got to use the proper fishing pole for the proper sized fish. So if I'm going after little fish, I need a, a lightweight rod. So I'm going to be using this rod, which is rated for 3 to 7.5 pound weight. And I have an appropriate reel. And this is a, a descending order of hierarchy. Let me make that simpler. Your rod needs to be the strongest thing in this package. Going from left to right, you have a rod. My rod is 7.5. Now, going to the bottom and then heading up. My reel is 7.7, .7, so I have a little bit of a mismatch. My rod, or my reel, should be like 7.5 or 7.0. Then my line here is 6 pound. But, you know, an overpowered rod, reel isn't going and it's only by 0.2 pounds dude so don't sweat it when we get into other rigs i will tell you that oh shit yeah here you here's where you should sweat it probably um and then i know that this is super lightweight stuff right i got a little one pound or a one out hook and some maggots i, I want a really sensitive bobber so the rod should be the heaviest rated item at 7.5 it is the real mm, yes my reel is my highest rated poundage at 7.7 .7. it should be 7.5 or 7.0 and then i got six pound line because that's all there is in the game i'm skipping it uh i'm skipping have uh, using a leader 
because, come on, man, a bluegill's not going to chomp off my leader. Um, but when I get up to this rig, which is what I brought for catching um, bass on bait, and I've actually got it set up for crappie and bluegill, but uh, I have a rod that's rated for 22 pounds, and my reel is a 20.9 descending order, right? My rod is the heaviest, my reel is a little lower, and then my line is going to be 20 pound line. Descending order. And then I have uh, an oval bobber, and I have a leader here, it's 18.7. Compared to my line, which is 20 pounds, I'm in descending order. Get it? Yep. There you go. And then I've got a two pound, uh, two, uh, a two odd hook and some of that. Um, over here, do I have a two odd hook? No, I have a one odd. Why don't I put a two odd on there? Two odd. Uh, let's see, eight to one odd. Oh, because the bluegill want a two odd hook and the crappie are one odd. Okay, so I guess I rigged this this one up for crappie and this one up for bluegill, but you can always change everything. All right, so now I jumped into here with a really big monster 69 pound rod, um, and that's for going after the flathead, the catfish, and the alligator gar. And yeah, I didn't bring a 110 pound um, bottom rod. I probably could have and should have, and I left a slot open because I might leave and come back if I make enough bank. Um, I'll probably figure out that, oh crap, I'm really lacking. I can't catch gar. Then I'll put a bomb ass bottom rod in that number four slot, which right now you see number four slot is empty. So I usually arrange my interface to be small bait rod, medium bait rod, larger bait rod, an oddball in the middle, something that's like a one-off, like throw a bottom rod in there that's huge. I should have just done it and brought it. Uh, in retrospect, I should have just done it and brought it. But then I go to the um, the next three, and these are my small, medium, and large lure setups. So this one is seven and a half pounds. I doubt I'm going to catch crappie and bluegill on the lures, but, you know, catching a 10-pound bass on a seven and a half pound rod would be pretty fun. <laughs> it really would. And then here I got a 23-pounder because uh, I, I, I just couldn't rig something up that was like 15 pounds um, with a lure. Uh, I could have gone and probably bought stuff because I got plenty of money. But whatever. You get me? Small, medium, and now let's look at my large lure setup. Bam! 72 pounds! <laughs> I really don't think I'm going to get um, uh, the flatheads or the gar or even the catfish with a lure here. But I had, I, had to, I had to rig something up. So, there you go. Now that we've done all that, let's go back to the map and hit Pelican Hut. first thing I'm going to do is do a couple of, I don't know, test casts at, um, uh, at my old haunt, uh, stomping grounds. Wow, dude. I'm getting 74 frames a second, which is irrelevant in this game, really. I mean, but it looks, it looks spectacular. I have to tell you, it does look really good. Let's see. Yep, it's not a far walk. It's right over here. You know what this place needs is uh, real alligators. And something seems to be weird about my graphics. Um, like when I shifted over to the other... Yeah, let's just set up here real quick. And I'm going to hit escape and shift over to another window. Then go back to the game. Maybe it will brighten up again. No, it looks the same. Damn. Well, this might have been an exploratory trip that cost me a lot of money. That was pretty awesome catching my 
personal best white crappy unique and a unique red eye here um, I'm gonna go through some of my fishing records and look at uh, what the current red ear record is what the current white crappie record bluegill and black crappie um, we'll do that in another episode so thanks for stopping by thanks for watching the video please give me a thumbs up it's the only reason I keep making videos if people like the video if nobody likes the video then I just won't make more videos have a good one game brain is gone